What is up, Cog Squad? Check out this new crazy contraption I got for the quail. <laughs> What's up guys, Jason over here at Cock Hill Farm. And recently, well, recently, the quail are getting bigger, as y'all know. I mean, they're fully grown now. And so they're drinking a lot of water. So we're constantly going in there, because we got two, I think it's one gallon water is in there. And so you go in there and you have to fill them up and the quail go absolutely nuts every time you go in there. So I was like, man, what can I do about this watering situation? and i found these waterers automatic waterers at gqf and i got through the uh the triple one which is i ain't got the bottoms on these yet but they're automatic waterers for quail and i was like hey 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 let's give these boogers a try so we're gonna hook these up today um i'm gonna start off with a five gallon bucket see how it goes you can actually hook these up to a continuous source like a water hose. I'm hoping the five gallon bucket is enough pressure because it says five pounds of pressure. So I'm hoping that five gallon bucket is enough pressure to um to work these waters. It's got a little float valve in the bottom of it right there. And it's got these little bitty short trays that are perfect for quail. And not only this would be a lot less stress on the quail, it's gonna save us a lot of time. I always say one of my biggest things about running our farm or our homestead, efficiency is key. Being efficient, anything you can do to help shave off some time is awesome. Time's money. <laughs> so let's get to putting these things in. What's up boss lady? How you doing today? Did you hear about the new watering system we're gonna try with the quail? Mm. I know it wasn't your idea, but I'll give you credit for it. You are the boss. But um, we're working on that today. I see you making your rounds. Come back over to the quail coop and uh, check it out when we get it ready, okay? If I realize that that five gallon bucket is not efficient enough that we may have to step it up, I may put one of those bigger barrels I got. I just think that 55 gallon is gonna be overkill. I don't want the water you know, to get, I don't want to say spoil, I don't think water can spoil, but I just don't want the water to get nasty over time because that's a lot of water for them quail to drink. I just think it's going to be there for a long time. It's not like the chickens, but the five gallon bucket may not be big enough. So I may have to step up, maybe find something around 15 gallons or something like that, but we'll worry about that later. Let's just see if it works first and they adapt to it. I know it looks good. The grass looks really good. I mean, it is, it's pretty much spread all the way out. I mean, if you remember last year when we did it, it was, you know, pieced together. But it's pretty full now. Except for our weeds. I ain't worried about them. We can cut them, fix that to pick some squash. Do you think, do the five gallon bucket, or do you think I ought to put a splitter on this water hose right here and run a water hose to it? That's up to you. If you want to do the splitter, you can try that and see how that works. Because my initial plan was I just grabbed the bucket, but as I was thinking I about just, it. I just hate for pressure to be on the, um. We would cut the, we would cut the pressure down with the. I know, but the water hose still has to be on. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because Katie had one this week that she leaves on with the end it on was it. Leaking. And she got home and water was going everywhere. Yeah, I think you're right. We'll do the five gallon bucket. Now I'm just going to let this silicone dry for, I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour, something like that. Leak test it, make sure it's okay. Got some stuff to do in the garden. It is, I mean, stuff's coming on. Squash is coming on, okra's coming on. So if it's gonna go pick it, weeds are coming on. We've had a lot of rain recently, so it really has made the weeds pop out. So we got a lot to do in the garden. But let's go, let's go get to picking some squash. I don't know where my little buddy ran off to. She said she wanted to help me pick the squash. And she is now MIA. My guess is she is at her incubators. My guess, because I don't see it. Unless she went with, unless she went with mama. 
who went to go put uh, hat orders up there at the mailbox. Guys, we thank y'all so much for ordering the hats. Oh, man, and the new stickers. We've had a ton of orders lately. We thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. If y'all are interested in hats or our decals, there's a link down below to our website, and you can go hit the shop button. Huge rain last night. has a lot of it laid over, but it should pop right back up. Our first patty pan of the year. Now, these you pick relatively small. You don't want to get them when they're too big. You want to get these small, slice them up. They're really good baked, but um, I don't know how we're going to prepare them. Mrs. Cockiel, she fried some last night, but don't know what she's got plans on doing with these today. Either way, they will get eaten. This is the gold prize, which is a straight neck squash. Now, this one's fairly small. It make a go another day, um, but we like to pick them young. This is how we like to pick ours. We don't want them really, really big. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. You wait till they get too big the seeds really are a nuisance and you don't want a lot of big seeds when you're trying to eat your squash no matter how you eat them now last year we made an awesome squash relish out of our squash there is a recipe up on our website so be sure to check that out if that's something you're interested in and it is delicious i love putting it on hot dogs i mean i love putting it on hot dogs instead of sauerkraut i use that squash relish but I also like to put it in my bowl of black eyed peas when I eat them. Got some eight ball squash going on. These are awesome. Look how beautiful my squash and zucchini are. Just absolutely gorgeous. While I'm in the garden, let me show y'all what else is going on here. I can't tell you how floored I am at these darn tomatoes this year. Because y'all have heard me mention it several times i have not been able to grow roma style or paste style tomatoes very well i just ain't gonna do it um so i tried it again this year with some that hoss has got called tachi it's a new hybrid paste tomato it's supposed to be really really good and let me tell y'all i don't have any problem growing paste style tomatoes anymore And it's like that all the way down. These plants are slap loaded with tomatoes. So we better have our cannon jars ready this year. My favorite tomato, as y'all know, is the Bellarosa. They are too loaded down, looking awesome all the way down. You can see them over here. Now, they are more of a slicer, which means I'm going to make a ton of sandwiches. Now, the one that I've been extremely impressed with is this new one that I'm trying called the Red Snapper. Look at these plants. They are extremely healthy. They're full. They're beautiful. And they're starting to put on fruit. Now, they ain't as far as advanced in fruit yet as the other two, but it won't be long. You can see they are they're coming on my spaghetti squash is going crazy this is one that i'm training on a trellis our cucumbers these are lemon cucumbers they should be producing pretty soon there's blooms galore now these are the max packs that i just planted and they're already up this is a pickling cucumber and i did a succession planting with them so these will be further along in the summer and that'll give us a continuous supply of cucumbers throughout the growing season you can do succession plantings like that so keep that in mind uh, you can do squash like that you can do a lot of summer crops especially here in the south i'm in zone 8a and you can do a lot of crops like that you can have a continuous continuous supply of veggies i do want to show you all these chocolate cherry sunflowers look at these things guys this is a new one at house this is, of course, this is Mary Cross Flower Garden. You can see it is booming. But these chocolate cherry sunflowers are just amazing. It's got a deep, deep purple chocolate bloom. So excited about those. So we decided to come back in the woods and find Miss Ozella, which is tricky. It is, I've been here three or four times and every time I have the hardest time trying to find her. 
but um she's still there she's still i don't know you know what the eggs look like up under i'm not gonna make her get up but she's still sitting so that's me thinking that she's still got eggs don't you think yeah or either they're hatching or either they're hatching you think they're gonna be hatching very soon mm -hmm. awesome okay girl we're just checking on you okay all right let's go back all right so it is dry my silicone's dry i got the uh quail waterers aka the ufos fixing to hook this bad boy up fingers crossed it's gonna work i got a good feeling about it i think it's gonna work i really do i think it's gonna work i think it's gonna be enough pressure coming out of this bucket to make this thing work I don't see no water leaking, do you? Are they working? Oh, I see it. It's coming out. It's coming out? Mm-hmm. Oh, there's some water. Yeah, water's coming out. So it's working. It is working. All right, this one don't have... Well, it does. It's coming. It's just slow. Water's coming out of this one. Good deal. Oh, y'all don't go crazy on me. <laughs> Maybe two or three minutes, maybe five minutes, and they're full. So it's working out great. It is really working good. Good, 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 good. Awesome. I'm gonna zip tie this hose up on this thing right here. Keep it from getting tangled up. But I'm happy with it. This is gonna save us a lot of time. You see this one? <laughs> I got a little buddy. Oh! So I've changed my mind. I had this right here. This come from the guy where we got our rabbit stuff from when we were in the rabbit business. And uh, I forgot all about it, but I just remembered it. It's a good bit bigger. It's already got a spigot made on it. My five gallon bucket started leaking and I was gonna have to do some more figuring around with it. But I remembered I had this blue one and I'm like, hey, let's use it. Those mosaics are some kind of pretty chickens. Look at that rooster. That mosaic, he does have purple feathers. And what's cool is, especially this one right here, that hen, look at her feet, they're like green. And she's pink. This one, mosaic, that's not a mosaic, is it? No, she moved on me. So you found the other one. Isn't she beautiful? I mean, look how gorgeous she is. And there's those bluish green looking feet. Olive. Got that mosaic head, that dark color with them electric blue ears. Beautiful chickens. Beautiful, beautiful chickens. Ooh, I had to put my sun hat on, man. It has gotten warm. Um, announcement. Got an announcement for y'all out there. We are fixing to get back on restoring the airstream. Uh, this was a project that we got kind of started on about over a year, maybe about a year and a half ago. I'm thinking. This was Mrs. Coghill's dream. This is still Mrs. Coghill's dream. I've gotten stoked about this thing. Uh, we found this Airstream. It's a 1969 Airstream International. Uh, it needs to be completely redone. If you haven't seen my rat video that was in the Airstream, go back and check it. I'll put a link down below. That'll give you an idea what this thing looked like when we got it. So in my videos here to come, you're gonna see us working on this thing. It's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a long ordeal. This isn't something that's gonna take a couple of months and it's gonna be ready. I'm guessing in about a year it'll be ready. I mean, I'm not gonna bore you with me drilling out rivets because there's like five million rivets on this thing. <laughs> so I'm just gonna bring you along when it's, it's it's some exciting stuff going on. Right there. Gotta get us some fresh hay for the goats because we are out and 20 bales. It won't be too bad. I loaded 10 by myself last time, so <laughs> I feel like you can do 20. I'm gonna be your supervisor. Alright, you do that. I guess it's gonna be number one. <laughs> Count down. One! That's 17, right? I think you ought to dance on top of that hay bale. Oh, no. 